All right, starting off here, we're going to grab a new sprite and get a little rectangle going and add some rounded edges. A little bit of color and yeah, it kind of looks like crap. So, scrapping this one and my intro was a dragon, so I'm going to keep it dragony, if that's a word. Aiming for a start button kind of like leagues, but with the image on the left side being a dragon eye. So for the button itself, I'm looking at multiple borders, and then I round off the left side, almost like a circle has been printed on it. Then I find an image of a dragon to mimic. Uh, mine's obviously going to be a pixelated, and... Turned out pretty good. And now I just need to add the code to make my button an actual button. So first I wanted my button to glow while the cursor was on top, which meant I also wanted to stop glowing when the cursor was not over top. Pretty easy, but it looks a bit boring. So I hopped back into my dragon eye, added a few tiny edits to make it look like the eye was closed. And this way the eye can be closed when the cursor is not over the button. And once you cursor over it, the dragon pops awake and the eye becomes more animated and it gives it a little nice touch. And then of course, since dragons love fire so much and I had a little more spare time, I jumped in the editor one more time and created some weird little red arky shapes, threw them into a particle, and then I hid most of it behind the button and the rest spews out over the top and it gives it a nice little fiery looking effect. And again, I threw this under the cursor over top of the button. And now we have about all of the things I could ever want a button to do when you cursor over it. Next on click, we want our button to do something, which is easy if you want a lame button. And to show you what I mean, I want a button that moves up and down when I click it, so it's a little easier to notice. So from here, I made, and by made, I mean someone else made, a 3D button, which is actually a 2D button, but it looks 3D because the size and all that fun stuff. So I threw in some on left mouse click while my mouse remains over the button, set the animation to down, and I edited a new animation, which is down, and it just kind of squishes some of the sides down, and it makes the button look like it was pressed down. And then when left mouse is not down, we will set the button back to the up position. So now our button goes up and down on clicks, and what I wanted to show was the ability to cancel your click. So essentially if you click on the button and it goes down and you're like shoot, you can just slide your mouse off last second and cancel your click. And in order to make this happen, we need to make sure three things are going on on the click event. One, we want to make sure the player releases the left mouse click. And at the same time, we want to make sure that the button animation is playing down, which is how we figure out what button we're currently pressing. And finally, we want to make sure that our mouse is currently hovering over the same button that is down. And if all three of these happen simultaneously, then you have your click event. So now if you click down and drag off and then release, it no longer counts as a click. And we gotta throw some text on the button so people can know what the buttons are for, which is easy enough. Just create a text sprite and go ahead and set the origin to the center and then throw an image point on our button. And we can move that image point slightly up into the right when button's in the down position. That way the text stays in relatively the same spot when it moves from up to down. And then since the first button got a cool effect on mouse over, we decided to throw in a little bit of code to change the text from black to red on highlight. And then my last goal was to make a multi-purchase on holding down the button. So I needed to create some instance variables. One is gonna be for the countdown timer. That way we can have a brief delay before we start buying all sorts of whatever it is we're buying. And then the next one is gonna count up quickly from zero each time, which will essentially track how many we are buying. So once each time I click a button, we're gonna set that timer to 60 and the amount purchased to zero. And then while my timer is greater than or equal to zero, and I just set it to 60, so it will start at that, we will subtract one from it every tick, which means roughly one second after holding down, we'll get down to zero. And then I will start adding one to the amount purchased as long as the same conditions are met. And voila, we have fancy buttons. And if you like these buttons, you're gonna love the subscribe button. Also, feel free to let me know if you have any questions in the discussion. 
or if you just want to take a look at my C3P file, you can head on over to itch.io and you're good to use everything in there. Enjoy those buttons and I'll see you all in the next one.